On this episode of the Film Optics Podcast, we're going to talk about how more films and games are being affected by the corona pandemic. We're also going to talk about Rick and Morty making its return in May, and we have some fan questions for you. So let's jump in. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Film Optics, where we bring you the headline hot takes of entertainment news. I am your host, Christian, and we will be talking about the world of film, TV, and everything pop culture related. Excuse me. And as always, I'm joined by my good friend and my co host, Devin. How are you doing today, man? How's your week been? I would like to be referred to as Tiger King from now on. That's just oh, oh. <laughs> my, my new nickname. <laughs> Tiger King, aka my name's Joe Exotic. <laughs> and he has like seven yeah. last names at the end. Yeah. Oh my gosh, shit, it's insane. <laughs> well, how how's your uh, how has how has your week been? Um, very slow. March was the yeah. longest month in the history of months. I know, right? Like, oh my gosh. Like, ugh, there's it's been a lot of crazy updates with the pandemic going on and you know we try not to talk about as much of that news as we can but sometimes we kind of can't help it because there are a few uh gut wrenchers today uh that we found out about so yeah man it's it's uh you've been gaming a lot what what, what have you been uh playing or you've been picking up reading at all no i'm not a reader (laughs) oh audio pod uh audio listener got those uh, audio books i know we've been dooming yeah, we we have been doing. Did, did uh did you beat Doom yet? I have not. I think I the last one I beat was the snow level. I I just got done with the snow level myself actually. So I think I'm on to the next um world. I don't think I'm okay. I'm trying to like judge it by the amount of weapons that you get, and I think I have like two or three more slots left. And I know Seth like blew through it. But it's like, yeah, I'm taking my time a little bit. Yeah, I'm definitely taking my time. And, you know, I figured I'd take my time because why not? Because we got nothing else to do. Watch some movies and play some games. I mean, we're both fortunate to, you know, keep our jobs during the pandemic. So that's that's always yes, really nice. Work from home is very clutch. Very, very clutch. Absolutely. But I'm um, getting a little bit off track, but that's all right. Um, so before we begin today's uh topics or news stories whatever you would like to call them uh you can listen to us on apple podcast spotify stitcher google play google music anchor youtube podbean and iheart radio just to name a few um it's a lot there's a long list <laughs> but um i was actually afraid that again like this is week two of me like being afraid that we're not gonna have a lot to talk about um we, we got we got some pretty good stories here i think so yeah yeah, definitely. But uh, I actually wanted to start this one off really quick uh, with me being a Music City and uh, being a big fan of Dolly Parton. Um, found out uh, today that she's actually donating $1 million to Vanderbilt Hospital, uh, aiding ongoing research for the coronavirus cure. And I just thought it was something nice to, uh, you know, for anyone who is listening out there in good old Nashville. So you know, kind of wanted to start that off and you know she's she's been uh she's been a big um big supporter of you know she she continues to provide a lot of uh hope i guess you can say during the pandemic and um one of her friends uh dr naji uh um broad uh who's been involved with uh vanderbilt for many years um informed her that they were making some advancements towards the research for a cure for the um COVID-19 so she actually announced on Twitter yesterday that she was going to be making that one million dollar donation to Vanderbilt so um hats off to you Dolly Parton yeah you've you've, yeah so working nine to five working nine to five (laughs) Keep, keeping um, up do with you... the uh, the good coronavirus news, and I also want to mention: Did you watch that uh, that John Krasinski news show? 
I have not, and I need to. And I, you sent it to me early in the morning, and I have more than enough time. And I was like, what do I do? Oh, I'm hungry. Let me watch YouTube while I cook breakfast right before uh, the start of my shift. And I need to. I'm going to today. I promise. It was, it was so good. <laughs> I got like, like maybe five seconds in. He's like, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. He's like, even though it's clearly uh, broad daylight outside. And then I know um, Steve Carell comes in. Yeah, that's nice it. little interview there. <laughs> Yeah, just I definitely have a little watch it. good news show for us to watch in these trying times. <laughs> oh, absolutely, man. I wonder um, if he's so, gonna do it weekly. I'm guessing he will. Yeah, I was gonna ask, is this like a, a one off thing or is he gonna be, you know, pumping these bad puppies out? We'll see. But Nothing I don't else know. to do. Yeah, it's very true. <laughs> Him and that oh god, manly beard, man. It's, it's so crazy to see, you know, even from the office, he looks like such a baby. And it's like yeah, now he's like he got a, a better man. haircut. Yeah, way better haircut. Man, that, that, that OG office haircut what did did not suit him. It suited his character, but not 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 him as a person. There's no way. Yeah, it looked very <laughs> fake. Yeah. But you know what's not fake, Devin? All these announcement delays we that wish have been they were. happening. We wish they were fake. It's ugh, I hate it. So um it comes to me with a heavy heart. Um, it's, this really sucks because I've been looking forward to this game for a long time. That Iron Man VR. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Iron Man VR has Devastated. been delayed. <laughs> Devastating. It no, but so I was, real. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I, I'm not a big fan of VR. Maybe when it gets more um, affordable, we can jump into it and maybe do a review of it. But I mean, I really kind of wanted to play Beat Saber though. So I thought that was pretty cool. But um, in all seriousness, uh, The Last of Us Part 2 has been delayed again with no specific uh, new date in sight. Unfortunately, I know a lot of people have been looking forward to this game. And I and um, it, it comes from Sony Interactive Entertainment, which is like the company or the part of Sony that owns all of their studios like Naughty Dog, uh, Sony Santa Monica, Sucker Punch insomnia games etc cetera, etc cetera. and um sony interactive entertainment made the difficult decision to delay the last of us part two and iron man um vr um until further notice uh, logistically the global crisis is preventing this of course and they they want to just push it back all together i know a lot i saw a lot of people say oh why don't they just you know release the digital version it's not going to work that way because um, people don't want to be spoiled by it. And there's a lot of people out there who have pre-ordered the, um, the LA edition, the, the collector's editions, essentially, in order to, to play this game, including myself. I pre-ordered the special edition. So I, I would like to have a physical copy of the game. And, you know, um, it sucks, but, hey, health, your health is more important. So. Uh, did you want to take the rest of these, uh, Devin? The rest of these uh, announcement delays? Yeah, we got some um, some updates. I think they included mm. dates for the uh, the first first three movies that were delayed: the Quiet mm-hmm. Place Part Two, Top Gun Maverick, and SpongeBob movie Sponge on the Run. I know SpongeBob <laughs> was like July. I think Top Gun was like what October or November. Yes. So, um, so the are you talking about the new dates? Yeah. So yeah, um, the new date for Sponge for the new SpongeBob movie is July thirty first. Uh, Quiet Place is September fourth, and Top Gun Maverick is um, December twenty third. So two days before Christmas. Yeah, we'll see if those hold up or if Corona keeps ruining everything. Yeah, I I swear, man. And it's and for everyone listening out there. You know, we we do apologize. We kind of. We tried to, I think that's pretty much all of the delays that we have for our news uh, today. So from here on out, I do believe, well, there's like a few smaller things, but this is like majority of the depressing news. The other things are more good news because of what's happening um, in the world right now. But yeah, let's, uh, let's just keep chugging along here. So we have Ryan Reynolds, Devin. He's in talks, and I know you're very excited for this because you've been talking about it a lot for the past few days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's in talks for a live-action Dragon's Lair adaptation. 
Um, do, you, do you know what that is, Devin? I have no idea. Probably. So it's Dragon's Lair from what I remember, and I believe they kind of, uh, there was a few Easter egg references to it in Stranger Things 2, Season 2. Um, it's, it, was, it was kind of like an interactive, it was, it was like an old arcade game type um deal so like dragon's lair uh this comes from comic book movie uh comic book movie.com excuse me um dragon's lair uh feature will look to adapt for the video game which the same name of uh which is part of the uh the dragon's lair franchise that swept arcades yeah 1983 so it's I mean, I I think he could do it. I mean, he's he's in that new movie. What is it called? Free Guy. Yeah. So I, I, at this point, I I think Ryan Reynolds can do pretty much anything. I, what about I you? I wonder, like, I don't know how how does he choose his roles? It just feels so random every time. Yeah, because like, it's I don't know. Like Deadpool was definitely random. Obviously, he he loved it, but then the Six Underground. That's weird. Free Guy, <laughs> definitely interesting. I definitely Detective I want to see Pikachu. Free. Like, I know <laughs> his, his catalog is just so strange. It but, really but is. I love it. Yeah, it's it. He looks like the um. He seems like the type of person who isn't afraid to take on these newer roles and just exciting, out there, out of the box type roles. So I think it'd be pretty cool, you know. I mean, I'm willing to know. watch anything he's in, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, good or bad. Well, I mean, he's in Six Underground. Did you see that? Yeah, I did not enjoy. <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, maybe we can reveal. I'm like, no, no, it's it's hard out here. It's these streaming movies. Sometimes it's it's tough. They're like, I, yeah, because like we we try our best not to you know go back in time. You know when the the throwback movie rack and whatnot. But some sometimes you got to. But I think we've been doing pretty well so far with um you know the reviews that we've been uh, pumping out. So. I thought that'd be pretty cool, but all right, Devin, this, this is the meat and bones. Well, <laughs> the meat and bones, the meat and potatoes of this, <laughs> of oh, this podcast yeah. episode, we're going to be talking about town. some tiger. We're going to be talking about some tiger King, everyone. And before we begin, we will be doing a separate uh, review that will be posted on Sunday uh, for all you listeners out there. So we will be doing a uh, mini series tiger king review so but we're gonna there's a lot of news coming out for people watching the show so it's like if you haven't (laughs) watched it yet what are you doing just you gotta watch it honestly yeah i keep asking people at my work i'm like hey like have you seen tiger king and someone's like oh unfortunately i saw the first episode and i was like okay well like what did you think of it and they're like oh it's just this is not for me and if it's not for you it's not for you i understand but all I have to say is at least try it before you knock it. That's all I ask. But you want to take this uh, next story here, Devin? Yeah, Tiger King is currently the most popular TV show, according to Rotten Tomatoes. It really is. <laughs> it just really came out of nowhere. Like I think a couple weeks ago is when I first heard about it. People mm. were kind of talking about it, not too much. <laughs> then I was like, it was in my mind. And I was like, all right, let's watch this. So I told my dad. We're going to watch it and we put it on and we watched the first episode and I was just like, (laughs) was he out? (laughs) We we, we both got roped in like right away. Oh my God. Honestly, I mean, that's what happened to me because you were like, yeah, man, you got to check out this Tiger King thing. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, what, what is this? You're like, it's the talk of the town. It's, it's crazy. And I was like, you know what? Fine. (laughs) Let's. Let's let's give and it a it try. Was on the front page of Netflix for a while. I was like, "What is this?" Yeah, it was. And I've seen <clears throat> Joe Exotic. Um, <laughs> you got that that, my- <laughs> that, that, uh, that Joe Exotic down pack, don't you? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. I, I've I've been practicing. <laughs> but this, and I wa- You know, I watched it just like you. I was I was roped in. <laughs> literally the first episode i was like oh my god this is holy crap what is this and then it just gets worse. every episode just piles worse. on like i think jeremy johns i think his name is on youtube he said it's like a dumpster fire you can't help but watch and it's like <laughs> yeah pretty much but <laughs> i i 
I think everyone should just try to watch at least one episode. G- give it a chance. I mean, I mean, there's even um, Edward Norton and Dax Zephyr both want to play Joe Exotic in yeah, this. I think, it, I think it'll be uh, interesting a, to to do some fan casting because there's a lot of characters in here. There is a lot, and, and I think, it is. I think there was announced that they did cast. Um, they did cast Carol Baskin for a series. <laughs> They cast um, Kate McKinnon to play her, <sighs> which I think is a pretty good match. But I, I, think, I think so. Are they doing a series or a movie? I think they said series. I think they said series. Uh, but it is, uh, there's something about Joe Exotic that just everyone loves. But like at the same time, it's like he's just. He's also a pretty bad person. Yeah. Like, wow. You know, without. It's everyone needs to go watch this movie or not this movie, this mini series. Excuse me. I mean, even, um, well, there's one of the stars, um, of the show, I guess you could say. Um, we, we won't get too much into it since you know we are doing a review of it. Um, there is, um, it's one of Joe's uh, co workers, uh, the guy with like all the teeth missing. Oh, you mean during. Yeah, well, I I was gonna yeah, I was trying to oh, not got, talk got, about it too. We got, we got to rope him in. Yeah, he's got he's yeah. got multiple husbands. That's he does that's have just, multiple husbands. That's just, <laughs> it's one of the smallest details. Younger like, men. Yeah. <laughs> and how old was how old is Joe? I have he's still no in, idea. He's still in. Well, yeah. Um. <laughs> so one of his lovers was mad that um his name is uh, John Finley. Um. Uh, he, he he did a lot of uh coke and meth with uh Mr. Joe Exotic. And, oh yes, he you know, did. That that goes straight to your teeth, as everyone knows, if you didn't already. And they're mad that you know they didn't. Sh- there was no pictures of him, you know, with with his his new his new teeth. He, he looks like a nice looking dude. Like absolutely. Yeah, and then yeah. Also, but. the Florida police are <laughs> re-upping the investigation into the disappearance of Carol Baskin's husband. Carol I, killed I sure her husband. So. <laughs> I hope so, because Carol killed her husband, and everybody should know it. If you don't know what we're talking about, go watch this documentary. This, or this miniseries, whatever you want to call it, a docuseries. Because I do not trust Carol Baskin's for a second. Because that face is just... Those eyes. Exactly. It's oh, like, oh, I don't want to get into it. Cats and kittens. Hey, hey, all you cool cats and kittens. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? Like, she is, if she's obsessed with everything cats. And like, and she's allergic to them. And yeah, and she's allergic to them. And she, like, I swear, everything in her, in, in her, her wardrobe is just leopard print, leopard print. And it's just like, okay, we get it. But like a lot of people don't like it because it's tacky, but that, that's just a little, <laughs> a little bit there. But Carol Baskin's killed her husband. I don't care what anybody says. I don't trust her. I don't trust anyone on the show. And you guys should all watch it, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and one last one last piece of <laughs> of Tiger uh, Tiger King news here. Rain Wilson uh, shares an image of himself as Joe Exotic, uh, <laughs> and it is a beautiful, beautiful picture. I and definitely I, think he could pull it off. <laughs> I think he could. I, I, I still think I have, I have David Spade at number one. I feel like he's too perfect because he was already. Joe I agree. Garrett. Right. I, 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 I agree. Joe Exotic. Pretty much, but I would also love to see someone else take the reins, and I think Rain Wilson would would be one of those people. Maybe even I would actually even like to see Brad Pitt play that Joe Exotic. Be, how do you how do you make Brad Pitt look like Joe Exotic? I don't even. I don't know, I don't know how Edward Norton would would pull it off either. Yeah, I don't see Edward Norton at all. As I mean, I think he, I mean obviously he could like act it, but I don't know how they could pull the look off. Dude, where do things have happened? And Dak Shepard's like <laughs> way too tall. Yeah, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. I I hope I hope there is more uh, Tiger King goodness for us I, out there. I've, I've heard rumors of a season two. There's that series. Uh, We're gonna be getting more. Yeah, because uh, 
just everyone watch the show. Please watch the show. <laughs> Please. But <laughs> uh, moving on here, this is a little uh, more more good news here. Uh, Rick and Morty very returns. Very, very good news. Rick and Morty returns May 3rd on Adult Swim. I now, definitely thought it was a uh, April Fool's joke because it came. I out thought April it was 1st. too. Yeah. And they even came out with a little trailer as well. And it's so is this is this the second half of, of season four or is this season this yeah, is the season second five. half okay that, that's what i thought i need to catch up myself because uh ever since i since i binged tiger king all last week literally all day saturday i binged, yeah, I binged it in one night like <laughs> yeah, he, he yeah. Didn't stop. <laughs> exactly exactly but uh yeah rick and morty's returning uh second half of season four so that would be really um interesting i think we should do a rick and morty season four review oh yeah i think it'd be pretty cool i, I mean i really like the first half yeah i gotta rewatch the first half and i'll probably do that sometime this weekend to be completely honest but yeah i think we should definitely do it man it'll be a lot of fun and we both we both love rick and morty so why not and it's we're perfect. very we're very smart and are very funny because we like rick and morty there's yes. no telling us otherwise <laughs> no telling us otherwise did you start um star wars yet nope clone wars oh my god you're lucky it's only like 12 episodes i swear <laughs> because we definitely have to review that and i'm oh it, it's this this season to me it's been very very good so far it's you know but um i digress <laughs> uh we have another little bit of good news here uh did you want to take this one Devin? yeah this one came out like an hour ago it's very yeah exciting. like <laughs> you like plugged it in i was like well this has got to go in Ops- absolutely south by southwest famous uh is it just a film festival is there other stuff there it's it, it's it, it's a film festival yeah. yeah well they partnered with prime video to get a nice 10 day streaming event for all their titles that would have been at the festival this year but of course it got canceled and they will be free to stream to everyone in the usa mm-hmm. targeted for late april so we might be able to see some, some cool upcoming <laughs> some, movies. So Green Knight, let's go. I'm so excited. I, I, I wonder, I, have they put out a list of what movies they were going to show? Um, I'm sure we can find it online somewhere. I'm like 99% sure that the Green Knight was a part of that showing for South by Southwest because one of, our, one of my friends, Jared uh, Buckendall, uh, go watch his uh, YouTube channels or his YouTube videos, everyone. They're, they are hilarious like this dude literally puts on a skit for every single video that he does and he pours his heart and soul uh, to it jerry buckendall i will put the link to his um channel and uh the youtube and on the podcast description but he's also part of the cinemania uh world squad with us also go check them out as well because they you know we, we we pump out some great content over there they actually just had uh their new show come out um on uh wednesday so i'll put that in the link in the description as well but um yeah so he was supposed uh jared what jared was supposed to go to south by southwest and his flight got canceled and i know a few other people griffin schiller um uh, so he has um his own youtube channel as well but um yeah uh i'm pretty sure it was supposed to be part of it uh the green knight but I'm pretty sure we can find that list somewhere because that would be really interesting to do. And, and it's just, it's perfect. Yeah. It gives us something to do for April, more movies to review. So thank God we're prime Twitch, Twitch prime, prime members, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Get the, the, the whole nine. <laughs> but um, uh, I guess I'll take this next story here. This is a little bit more gaming news here. I, mean, I kind of like that we've been, you know, sprinkling in here, or there, given our our roots. Yes, <laughs> but you know, so our I think it's past. nice. <laughs> our dark. Hey, I I think we could have pulled it off, honestly. But I mean, you know, it takes more people to do that kind of channel. But that's all right. Uh, so uh, the next story we have here is uh, the Nintendo Switch 2020 lineup may be dominated or will be dominated by Mario games, old and new. This comes from Eurogamer. No, thank you, Eurogamer. I'm going to completely block your ads because I don't care for that. So there's been a lot of mix-up or a lot of uh, stirring around in the gaming 
uh, industry that uh, Nintendo Switch's uh, first party lineup for the rest of 2020 may be dominated by Mario games, um, new and old. Um, since the 35th anniversary of Super Mario of, of Mario or Super Mario Brothers is coming up, and this it's apparently supposed to be, um, it's supposed Nintendo is supposed to release a uh, Super Mario 35 year back catalog this year for the Nintendo Switch. You know, we don't know if this is going to be individually sold, if it's going to be a huge collection for the Switch, uh, you know, including every game from, you know, uh, Mario Galaxy might be remastered on there, 3D Mario favorites, things th- things of that nature. You might as well just uh, do them all. Why not? Yeah. And um, I guess uh, Jamatsu, which is another um, website, has actually also confirmed that Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine um, will be as well, um, you know, added in with all this, this goodness. This is actually a really good website to use uh, for gaming, uh, J- Jamatsu. But um, it's, it's pretty interesting. Jamatsu has been doing a lot of... Um, a lot of updates on this quote unquote back catalog. Um, apparently there is some type of truth to it. Uh, Venture B has gone on and said uh, with reporting that Nintendo is, is pursuing something like a super Mario all-stars to um, for the 3ds Mario games. And then this one includes super Mario 64, Mario sunshine, Mario galaxy, Mario galaxy two things of that nature. But I don't know. I, I wanted to get your thoughts on this seven. Cause we both used to have switches, but then I sold mine. Um, I kind of regret it, but it's not like you can find one now anyway. So what's your take on this? Um, I, I still have my switch and I think, I don't know if I want to keep it or not. Hmm. I'm not, I'm not an animal crossing guy and that's kind of swept the nation currently. Yeah. Well, I'm surprised you sold Smash Brothers. Like, what I, happened? I, what, what's going on? I was never good at it, and there's <sighs> no one to play with. Remember, we used to play with, <laughs> with Brian as kids. Yeah. <laughs> God, I loved it. Well, I loved it because I was good at it, but I was, I'm not as good as our other friends. But Seth, I will take you on. I swear. <laughs> one of these days, I'm going to. I'll probably get my butt kicked, but that's okay. <laughs> But yeah, so so you say you're thinking about selling your Switch. I know we've been talking about. It. I'm. I thought you already sold it already because you texted me a few weeks ago. You're like, yeah, I think I'm just gonna get rid of it. And I was like, oh, okay. I mean, if you want to sell it, what's up? <laughs> well, it's looking like they're pretty low on stock. So uh, four hundred, five hundred. Wow. Ooh. Uh, I can like. Mm, let me uh, get this podcast off the ground running. And I'll I'll pay you later down the line. Oh, and we'll, okay. we'll 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 figure out something. It's 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 all good. We we, we already know where each other lives, so it's it's perfect. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm I'm hoping something like this can come because, um, Nintendo has been Nintendo used to be really good about their preserving their uh, legacy titles, which is their um you know their backwards their all their older titles when the what was it the wii's the uh the the wii and the wii u had the virtual console and you were able to buy a lot of their legacy titles through there uh hence nintendo has kind of did away with that um and they've given people the option to play their old legacy titles via their online subscription but i don't know i've i felt like we've talked about that too much already but it's 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 pretty exciting news honestly I, i i would like to see it Mario, let's go. <laughs> so let's move on to this next one here. Uh, this next story. Uh, this is getting back into our, you know, film news, the thing that we're, we're, we, we like to talk about the most. Um, disregard Mario <laughs> segment there. But David Harbour has gone, has been saying that he's been open to a digital release for Black Widow. Uh, he says he has not seen the movie. He's seen some stuff in ADR. And it looks really good. He said he would definitely watch it on Disney Plus. Devin, what are your thoughts about this? Because I know a lot of people have been, you know, talking about this online. Should they release it? Should they not? I'm in, I'm in the middle. I can see both sides. Like, mm. obviously, if it came out on Disney Plus or anywhere like to rent, I would do it right away because 
I just want to be a part of the conversation as far right. as the future of the MCU. But I also love going to the theater, so it would be nice to be able to see it on the big screen. Yeah, I I agree with that. I think, and I, I would agree with you there, the 50-50, because for, for the longest time, we know that a lot of these movies have been coming out early on video demand. But I think the one thing people fail to realize is that every movie that is um, being pumped out early digital release, um, the, all of those movies were already in theaters pre pandemic so you know you had your sonic you the gentleman um you had harley quinn uh you know etc cetera, etc cetera, uh, invisible man emma onward so it's like all of these movies were already in theater so like it makes sense for these studios to give people the ability to watch them when they can because since it's like oh well they can't go to the theaters let's bring the theaters to them and i do agree with you um I, I don't know if I would put it on Disney Plus because there's already enough people who are subscribed to us, us included. And I feel like that's too cheap of a ticket. So let's say if someone doesn't have Disney Plus to sign up for $6.99, they essentially just paid six, six, seven bucks for Black Widow. I feel like I feel like they could go the renting route. And I know I've been saying that I'm not a fan of the whole pay $20 to rent um, movies like Emma or The Invisible Man or, and I forgot the third one, what was it, The Hunt? But for me, it's like, those are smaller movies, and we've talked about this before, but it's like, for those movies, I wouldn't, uh, for, the, for the right price, it would have to be under very specific guidelines. I think I would watch it, but like you said, I think I would just rather wait for the theater experience or honestly, if you're going to release it, just release it on, on, uh, on, on Blu-ray or home, home video and digital all together. D- don't even say, Oh, you know, you can rent it here. Just, just release it, just release it out to the wild, you know, f- fire up the, uh, the DVD, the Blu-ray burners and just, just ship it out. Honestly, I don't know. But, um, we have a little bit more of uh, Disney news here. Uh, so this, this is a rumor. Um, Ahsoka Tano uh, live action Star Wars. Um, Dev, you still there, Dev? Okay. You still yeah. there? I think. Okay. I was like, oh, like, wait, did I lose him? No, it's all right. Um, so Ahsoka Tano live uh, action Star Wars series is rumored for Disney Plus and is in early uh, plan to development. I know you haven't seen Star Wars The Clone Wars, so I can't really get your opinion. But <laughs> this is, um, I, I, I would be down to see it, you know, especially Rosario Dawson. Um, Osaka is probably my, my number two favorite. If not, it goes back and forth between her and Anakin and Obi-Wan. Honestly, just between Anakin and, and Ahsoka. But, yeah. I mean, did you, did you have anything you want to comment on that at all? Um, we'll, we'll see if it is actually a thing. Who knows? Cool. <laughs> well all right so i think you shared this one with me so why don't you yeah. take this one uh jamie lee curtis very very famous and well-respected actress never is, heard of her a day in my life <laughs> is, oh i hope that's not true <laughs> no i'm kidding <laughs> she's gonna be in mandalorian season two it's, it's good news so is this rumor being confirmed to be true or is this still a rumor well i think they saw her on set i think it's true all right. Well, Jamie Lee Curtis can she can bring it. Uh, you know, she she's a phenomenal actor. Freaky Friday. Freaky Friday. Was was that our first exposure to Jamie Lee Curtis as well, kids? The, the original Halloween was mine. Oh, that's right. So yeah, Freaky Friday was mine. <laughs> very was different movies. Say, very very different movies. But Freaky Friday is still a very good movie. I actually it's one of my favorites. But. Um, and most is, is recently, that, Knives Out is, is what she. Yes, that's right. She in. was in Knives. Oh, she did. She absolutely killed it. She is just fantastic all around, and just I think this is going to be fantastic. Uh, this comes from MakingStarWars.net. Um, not sure how reliable they are, but if they're you know reporting the same thing every every other news uh, website is reporting, um, yeah. It must be at least somewhat. There must be a little bit of truth in there. So 
there's a chance that she could be in the second season of Mandalorian, and we wish her all the luck in the world. Yes. But this next one, Devin, I was actually kind of excited, but I got into a little bit of a, of a tussle with this man on Twitter um, from MCU Cosmic. Um, but um, I won't say his name just for not for good being a good sport, whatever you want to call it. Um, but this comes from MCUcosmic.com. Uh, something X Men related is apparently in the works for Disney Plus, and I absolutely love the X Men. Probably my favorite team of heroes of all time. And earlier today, I guess people have noticed that Disney Plus added uh, X Men uh, icons to their account, which I need to change mine around actually. So. I mean, it's it's been a while since since I've actually changed my 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 account on Disney Plus, or at least my my picture. I think we've all had the same one for a while. <laughs> yeah, but um, I guess this could lead to something. Um, you and know, they, they some have people to, they have to give us the X Men eventually. Yeah, eventually they they do, and you know, the the '90s X Men is on Disney Plus, which I've actually really been meaning to watch myself, but um, I've also been wanting to check out ozark because i've actually never really watched it before i'm currently uh watching it oh, well not thoughts? right now right now but wow well, i mean it could be i don't know <laughs> just have it on mute just on subtitles <laughs> he's like i'm listening to you and the show audio at the same time it's very difficult but come on <laughs> but uh i guess this this could mean something you know we they we all know that uh disney uh reclaimed what was theirs or marvel reclaimed what was theirs i should say um, with the X Men, Fantastic Four, Deadpool, all coming back to their their home base here at um, the MCU. So hopefully something comes from this. Uh, you know, a while ago the creators of X '90s X Men said they wanted to uh, pitch a revival to Disney. So I mean, we we all know Kevin Feige; he's he, he's all for this kind of thing. So hopefully, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, you want to take this next one, Devin? Yeah, I saw that you had a nice interest in this. Um, <laughs> I didn't think it was that newsworthy, but a lot of people are upset about it. Microsoft yeah. says the new Xbox Series X controller will still use AA batteries in order to give players the flexibility to choose between having batteries or rechargeable packs. Yes. So what what are your... And I mean... I guess like what what are your thoughts about this? Like, do you honestly care, or because we all know that Xbox has been, you know, using this tactic since day one? Well, for me personally, it doesn't matter at all because whenever I use an Xbox controller, it's plugged in, so I don't even have batteries in it. So Ugh, you're one of those wired people. I'm just joking. I mean, on <laughs> PC, it's definitely nice to have it wired. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, and Devin has pretty much heard my little two cents about this, but I see a lot of people out there complaining about this, saying, "Oh, why aren't they? You know, what? Why? Why aren't they uh, built in battery packs like Sony?" And blah 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 blah. blah. But um, let's take this into effect. So I, I have a PlayStation Four, and I have one controller. If something, <coughs> excuse me, if something happens to that controller. Like if 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 the battery goes dead, you know it's not holding a charge. I cannot use that controller myself. I literally would have to either go out and buy a new one or send this one back into Sony and have them repair it. And I'm pretty much controllerless. So it's very, I, I think it's important to have the option to choose. But I do agree when it comes to I think Microsoft should at least provide. Uh, detachable rechargeable batteries or some type of battery pack with their xbox controller but yeah, that's just my nice. little yeah because you know, it would still give the people a flexibility but it's like hey you know you can use double a battery double double a batteries if you want to <clears throat> or you know you can use the a recharge the detachable chargeable battery pack that came with your xbox but to get like i don't know one but at this point, I think consoles should actually start shipping with at least two controllers myself, but that's just me. And that's just my two cents on it. So we'll just um, mosey on down here 
to the next uh, thing. But I know you, Devin. Well, I, I was I was a fan of this movie, but do you want to take this one? La di da di da, Hobbs on the show. <laughs> Hobbs and Shaw too in development, which isn't Woo! surprising. The first one did well, and we both enjoyed it. Yeah, we did. Your hatred for The Rock. I don't know why. I hope I hope he's listening. <laughs> I don't hate this. Is, I don't know what it is because like I I like The Rock, but like at the same time, I'm so tired of seeing him in every single movie. It's like and I'm two like, per year, and maybe a show here and there. Uh, I don't know what it's if, and and that may be true, but it feels like more, and it's just I don't know what it is, man. It's. I, I'm still trying to work it out for myself. So I'm really um, excited you, for this though because of the inclusion of Ryan Reynolds and Kevin Hart into the mix. If they bring that was guys very back, nice. <laughs> then we got a nice nice comedic future to look forward to for Fast and Furious. Ryan Reynolds, both of them came out of nowhere in this movie. I was like, I was not expecting this. But I did like you know, Hobson Shaw. I I felt like it's crazy as it sounds. I feel like it was a little bit more grounded in a way versus you know all the other Fast and Furious movies. But you know the the, the cast was stacked. It, yes. it was very very nice. <laughs> but I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. I'll definitely check it out. I just I I think I'd rather check out Hobson Shaw two over Fast Nine. I I. I cannot <laughs> with that franchise. So that means that means your team rock. Since they had <sighs> a little that little quarrel made them split up. But yeah, that's right. The little spat. So I guess I am on the rock side after all. So um so I guess I'll take this next story here. Um this is a little bit more of delay news. I know we're all tired of hearing about it. But that is okay. So uh, Sony uh, Pictures delays Ghostbusters Afterlife to March 5th, 2021. This is, wow, crazy. And they moved Morbius uh, to March 19th, 2021. And the infamous Uncharted <laughs> movie to October 8th, 2021. So, um as we all know, Uncharted can't catch a break. Uh, no news about Venom. Did that get moved or no? I think it's staying in 2020 for now. Mm. Why? <laughs> I, I can't be excited for that movie knowing what we've seen. <laughs> I actually watched Venom 1 uh, when I went to my cousin's house in um, in Kentucky. And uh, what a few of his friends came over, and one of them said, "Oh, like we were trying to figure out what movie to watch." And one of them had said, "Oh, I had never seen Venom," and I was like, "Oh God, here we go." But it was it was actually fun because they also saw how crappy it was, <laughs> and it was just trash. But it was fun to watch it and you know make fun and just have conversations on the side. But uh, do you have any thoughts about this, Devin? Or is, do do any of these movies affect you? Like that, you actually really, really want to see. They're all just meh. Yeah, meh on the scale. Yeah, I mean, I guess if there was one I wanted to see, I am kind of interested to see what they do with this Uncharted movie. But I mean, I'm assuming it's just going to be more of a modern age, modern age Indiana Jones because that's what Uncharted is anyway. So I heard it got cool. delayed the first day of shooting, which is hilarious. It did. Tom Holland cannot catch a break, man. I'm telling you, it's at least well, he's got at least he's got abs. He's yeah, got that going for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at least he's got that going for him. Um, so I know this one really. I I know you've been looking forward to this for a lot. This next story we have here. I know you're a big DC guy, and you you've been you've been tweeting the hashtag uh, every day. Uh, <laughs> release the Snyder cut for as long as I can remember. <laughs> but <laughs> this is actually an April Fool's uh day joke from Screen Rant. Um they put out a honest trailer uh cut uh to troll DCEU fans. <laughs> and then there's also and, that that fake HBO account last night that you sent. Oh yeah. Oh my god, that was so funny, right? Oh my gosh. Like everyone's like, oh my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like within the first Excuse me. Within the first two comments, this one guy's like, 
you you know they only have 12 subscribe uh 12 followers right the, the cover <laughs> they posted looked pretty legit too it really did i was like i'm like okay there's no way i'm like all right it's april fools you know you got to keep on your p's and q's but at the same time you know i feel like it is hard to joke about a lot of things now since everything is getting delayed so but i i thought it was a nice rant i would act did have, have you watched did you watch the uh the video on youtube i have not yet it is hysterical i, I would actually I, I would like to link it at the end of this podcast for people just to at least listen to it because it's funny and i i may or may not do that we'll, we'll see during the editing phase but um i actually have yeah. some, some breaking news here regarding hbo sorry go ahead <laughs> um hbo has announced that starting friday april 3rd they will be allowing users to watch a few programs for free no account required it says oh. over 500 hours of programming free and that includes tv shows such as ballers barry silicon valley succession true blood veep the wire and then there's also a bunch of movies too some include detective pikachu Lego movie 2 um happy feet 2 Oh my god, have that happy feet. Yeah, it's just there's that's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, she is really killing it with that. So so is this through cable or is this through internet? I think it's on the HBO Go or Now app. Oh, okay, okay. That that's that's nice. I, I, I really like that. My me and my parents have been subscribers to HBO for as long as I can remember. So it's actually kind of hard not to see, you know, HBO even on my screen because you know growing up we've we, we've always had that and hbo pumps out really good movies i hear barry is actually a really good show um, and big, i think they, i'm a big barry fan oh you watched it oh yes. see i haven't watched it yet how, how many episodes is it per uh per season i might, I might check it out depending. i want to say 10 is it a quibby is it as short as a quibby <laughs> not quite <laughs> all right well I can actually get behind that. Oh, I'll, I'll, there's so many things that I've been meaning to play and you know watch, but you know we don't necessarily have the complete luxury of doing whatever we want to all day because you know as I mentioned before, you know we're both fortunate and both blessed to still have our jobs, but you know it's not completely quarantine life for us in a way it is, but in a way it isn't. The only main difference is that we can't go into our offices, so yeah. Oh, well, um, but I guess I'll take this uh, second to last news show here or news <laughs> news piece. Excuse me. Uh, it looks like Don Cheadle has um, a role has been revealed in Space Jam 2. And this comes from Cinema Blend. And um, I, I kind of dig it. I believe that he is supposed to be a villain. Bad guy. I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. I'm, I'm the bad guy. <laughs> so, um, I, I, I think this everyone is loves the Cheetle. Yeah. So it's like, there, there's not much to comment, but sure. Like, let's, let's do it. Like, absolutely. You know, whatever, um, uh, villain and, or whatever other character he ends up playing, I'm, I'm down for. Um, so yeah. And you know, LeBron James is supposed to be the, uh, main attraction of this, but, Hopefully LeBron James doesn't get uh, overshadowed by the Cheeto. The so Cheeto man. To, the Cheeto man. You got any I hope he has a British accent. <laughs> Why? I don't know. <laughs> I don't love what you're doing today. <laughs> What's he gonna say? LeBron. LeBron. Uh, I I uh, I used to be really good with my British accent, but at the same time, uh, I I gotta work on it some more. But um. <laughs> The news that made everyone very angry. <laughs> this is this is our last piece of news for the show today. And we definitely saved the best for last. And uh, we actually have a few fan questions as well after this last piece of news. So uh, we'll get into those here in a bit. But um, <laughs> so as people may know, um, there's a little game out there that people used to play called Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Back the best in the, of all time. The best of all time. Well, okay, would you say Modern Warfare 2 is better than the original Modern Warfare? Yes. 
Would you? Ooh, okay. You know what? I'll I'll, I'll agree with you there for sure. Because I this is well, this is one kid in my uh, <clears throat> when I grew up with. He knew every single Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the original maps, like frontwards and backwards. You, you, you remember strategy guides, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those, those good old things that don't exist anymore. Actually, I think they still do, but they're very hard to come by. You have to go to like Walmart to find them or something. But um, so Activision, the, the company we all know and love, um, a remastered version of the game is coming out, but. It only includes, well, actually, it's out already. Um, it only includes <laughs> the campaign. <laughs> so, Which is like uh, five hours long. Right. It's not very long. I, it would take you maybe like, what, nine, ten hours to beat it on the hardest difficulty, uh, depending on your, you know, your style of, style of play. But um, it just doesn't. There's something sitting wrong about this because, as we all know, back in the day, Xbox used to have a um, deal with Call of Duty that uh, DLC maps would come out a month for free. I mean, a month prior to hitting PlayStation. And now the tables have turned within these past few years. Activision has made that essentially that same deal, if not a little bit worse, with um, Sony. And <laughs> the Modern Warfare 2 uh, campaign remastered has um, ex exclus ex uh, exclusivity period on the PS4 and will launch uh, on PC and Xbox One later on April 30th, uh, although you can pre-purchase it now. Um, it's more of... Um, so Activision isn't... It is still holding that exclusivity despite everything that's going on because, number one, if you're going to make... If you're going to remaster one of the best uh, Call of Duty games of all time. Why not include the multiplayer, the thing that, you know, Call of Duty is mainly known for? But, um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, Sony and Activision, uh, mainly Activision is, you know, holding this hostage on, on, on um, for, you know, they're sticking to their deal. Uh, we have a few quotes here. Did you want to read the first one or read the second one? Yeah, let me pull it up. Yeah, because I, I, I put the quotes for uh, Alana and then Ryan McCaffrey, um, like, right below. Yes, the, uh, this is from Alana Pierce. I understand it's just a business, but now, of all time, seems like a really shitty time to release a one-month time exclusive video game. Preach. Preach. Uh, if you guys do not know who Alana Pierce is, she has been taking the gaming industry by storm. She has her own podcast called Play, Watch, Listen. Uh, I think it's very interesting. She has a few game developers on there, as well as uh, Troy Baker, uh, a uh, actor who has played, you know, portrayed in many video games. Some may remember remember him from the Batman Arkham series. Others as Joel from The Last of Us, and he was also in Borderlands for a bit as well. But um, yeah, Alana is not very happy about this, and uh, neither is Ryan McCaffrey. Um, Ryan McCaffrey uh, posted this on Twitter a few days ago. He says, holding a 10-year-old game's remastered hostage on one console is just profoundly pathetic. Uh, but this is from the same company that forced the last Call of Duty Modern Warfare remaster into an $80 bundle, which is very true. And I remember that. And I was like, this is asinine. Like, yes. holy crap. And... And he also continues on by saying, so I sh guess I shouldn't be surprised. Um, <laughs> not that it makes it any less dumb, uh, which I, I agree with both Alana and Ryan McCaffrey. Ryan McCaffrey works over at IGN. Alana is over at Funhouse on YouTube. Uh, so go check out Alana Pierce. I mean, IGN's IGN. Everybody knows who they are. So, but uh, yeah, if you don't know who Funhouse is, um, yeah. But yeah, it's and I remember that eighty dollar bundle game. They tried to sneak that in there, and what was really messed up is that um, people would essentially buy the game and they would try to sell the uh, COD Modern War uh, Modern Warfare the original remaster back to GameStop, and GameStop wouldn't take it like at all. It was it was crazy, and it's like why wouldn't you just release this to the public? But I don't know. Do you have, you have any other last thoughts about this before we get into fan questions? The moral of the story is fuck Activision. Yeah, I I could I could say the same thing for Sony, but I think this 
I mean, you know, it takes two to tango, but um, you know, is this this is more on Activision's court because, of course, you know, Sony's going to let them. Sony's going to Sony, uh, as we've said before. Uh, <laughs> but um, you know, Activision is going to Activision. They're they're they just continue to prove. You know, it's it's more of a once uh, two steps forward and one step back situation. You know, they you think they're on the right track. You know, they come out with Call of Duty uh, Warzone for people to play for free, which is amazing. And then they pull something like this. And and we understand, you know, it's like a lot of Pierce said, it's just business. But now of all times, just you should just release it. It's like, why, you know, the, you got half your player base doing all this stuff, you know, playing this, playing the game. Why not have everyone just enjoy it together during these trying times? But uh, that does it for all of our news stories today. And we have fan questions, Devin. We, we, got, we got a few here. Um, so I guess what we'll do is I'll have you read one and then I'll read one. And yeah, we'll just uh, wrap it up there. So did you want to take, which one did you want to take the first, second, or third? I'll take the second. All right. So I will take the first one. This comes from um, Mama Mimi uh, Michelle on Twitter. She asks, um, what movies are we sad about um, to have, to, uh, what, what movies are we sad about having to wait for a release? She says she's been trying to do research on sales for video on demand or rentals, but she hasn't found any. Um, I guess I'll go really quick. Unfortunately, when it comes to the video on demands, um, and for what people who don't know what video on demand is, it's just that that movie has been released digitally. So you can find it on all digital platforms such as Amazon, Voodoo, iTunes, YouTube, et cetera. And um, I would say for me right now, it's, it's a tie between Black Widow and that's honestly, um, I, I I was really looking forward to um to a quiet place part two, yeah. That 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 was the one I'm probably the most sad about. W yeah, what about you? I agree with those, but also everything that's getting pushed back. I just yeah. hate all of it. Right, and you know it, it is what it is. Like, this is something out of our control, and you know hopefully you know we're just, everyone's just trying to make best of the situation but um especially for the rentals uh there are a few videos uh excuse me a few movies you can rent right now um uh michelle and that is um emma the hunt and the visible man they are all available for renting on any digital platform for about 20 bucks for a 48 hour period i think the um, only it, the only deal i was seeing i think amazon had them for like 17.99 which is slightly less yeah holy crap damn i totally forgot and practical jokers <laughs> did you take that out <laughs> or did i skim over it the impractical um, jokers yeah. movie came out yeah that well, on, on digital release okay and, and bloodshot yeah um, wait did you see bloodshot no <laughs> Oh boy, I'm I'm kind of interested to see it. There's that one guy on Twitter who's trying to say that Bloodshot's better than Birds of Prey. I mean, we haven't seen Bloodshot, but I mean, given from all the reactions I've seen, there, there's no way that Bloodshot's better than Birds of Prey. But that one weird dude with the glasses, he's like, you know, tilting him all sideways. I forgot his name, but um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, thank you for that question, Michelle. And uh, we're going to go on to our next one, Alex uh, Dolzel. He's one of my good friends. Um, do you want to take that question for me, Devin? Who is your dream lead for a potential quarantine movie? You want to take this one by storm? I think the first name that popped up in my head was just Joaquin. Just because he's Joaquin. And he does Joaquin yeah. things. <laughs> and he says Joaquin things. Yes. And he just breathes joaquin things so all right uh joaquin Phoenix for you and i would have to say i don't know why but i'm like fixed on brad pitt right now i don't know what it is but i think he would be a great uh dream lead for a quarantine movie or maybe it should be cliff booth from <laughs> once upon a time in hollywood uh during a quarantine movie because i think that would be way more funny and just completely enter entertaining just, just him and his dog just him and his dog. 
But uh, this like next one comes from Alex Madden um, from over at Cinemania World. I'm pretty sure he asked this question again, but I um, mean, asked this question already. I can't really remember, but it has no. It's it's a bit of a bit meaning. Um, it's a meme. <laughs> but it, it's it, it's a meme with Johnny. With uh, he asked with Johnny Depp's reputation as an actor, how does that affect the 2020 Boston Red Sox chances of winning the World Series? Um, I'm just gonna give you a pretend answer and say. Uh, seven to one. Yes. That's, that is the answer. <laughs> seven to one is the answer. But <laughs> uh, that pretty much does it for our fan questions and for our new show today. Wow, we, we had like an hour today, man. That's, this, this, it's been a while. I, th- I think we almost hit an hour in the last one. But uh, was there any last comments, questions, concerns you wanted to, um, you know, bring up before we wrap up here? Good episode. Looking yeah, forward really, to it was our, re- our Tiger King review. We can dive yes. into the memes. Yes! Oh, I'm so excited, everyone. Yes, again, we are reviewing Tiger King. It will be out this Sunday um, for the, Nef- the Netflix miniseries review. So I'm very, very excited to just dive in and just talk everything about this this show because it's just wow. It's it is just wow. I everyone, please at least try to watch it at least try to watch the first episode you know t- take of it what you will you know it, 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 if you don't like it at least you can say you tried it and it, it, at least go through the first the first full episode but again you can listen to this podcast and um actually before i get into that thank you Devin, as always for coming on and for everyone listening at home you can listen to this podcast on apple Podcasts, spotify stitcher google play anchor youtube Podbean and iHeartRadio. And I have one more announcement, Devin. I'm going to start streaming on Twitch because hey. there's nothing else to do. And I've been working very hard to, you know, get everything set up. You know, we, we streamed before in the past, but I feel like I have more of a better grip of how uh, everything is coming together. And I'm able to actually make the transitions and the templates and everything I would like to have for the channel. So you can actually, so I will be streaming on my personal um, Twitch, uh, Twitch account. Uh, I thought about making one for Film Optics. Technically, I did, but I felt like, you know, this is more of just like a side gig. You know, we want to keep this, you know, our, our, our main focus is, you know, movies, TVs, pop culture. And uh, yes, gaming is a part of that. But our main focus is the, the film industry. So, um, you know, just as a little side project, I'm going to start uh, streaming on Twitch. You can follow me on Twitch. You know, this is just more of a nice, nice little hobby. Um, I believe I'm going to start streaming some of Doom Eternal. I'm going to try to finish that up. And I, th- I, think, I'm, I think it's time to finally tackle into the, uh, tomb, the new Tomb Raider game. So I might be doing a little bit of that. Maybe a Last of Us Part 1 um, live stream. So I'm extending that up this weekend. Um, I believe I'm either going to try to stream on Friday or Saturday. So sometime during the weekend, I will tweet out in our Twitter uh, account, let everybody know. Um, you can follow me on Twitch at Eulenberger. That's E-U-L-I-N-B-E-R-G-E-R. So um, I'll put that in the link in the description as well, uh, as long as, as everything else. And um, I believe that's it. Uh, stay tuned for our Tiger King review. And um, yeah, thank you everyone for um, the fan questions today. That really meant a lot to us. You know, we've been trying to get more engaged with, uh, with our podcast. And, you know, we, we wanted to hear, hear some feedback. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and w- leave us a, a rating as well you know we we want to see what we can do to enhance this experience for you guys but um i believe we will see you guys in the next one Peace.